let's talk about the magnetic properties of the transition metal complexes and see how the crystal field theory helps in the prediction of all these properties and here on your screen you can see that the different things which the crystal field theory tells us about the splitting patterns in case of the transition metal complexes and we all know that the splitting patterns are different for case of the octahedral tetrahedral tetragonal as well as the square planar type of geometries right and crystal field theory explains in a well manner that why the splitting of the degenerate d orbital takes place and what are the patterns in these different kinds of geometries moreover the crystal field theory also gives us information about the magnitude of the splitting it tells and it explains why the splitting is high in some complexes in which the delta is always greater than the pairing energy which are actually a type of the low spin complexes on the other hand it also tells us why there are some complexes which shows low splitting in this way here in which the delta is less as compared to that of the pairing energy and that exists like the high spin type of complexes and at last i want to add here the last thing which the crystal field theory tells us the it is the exact number of unpaired electrons present in any given transition metal complex and now if we talk about the magnetic properties we can say that the magnetic properties are nothing it is actually the magnetic behavior of any transition metal complex whether it is paramagnetic or diamagnetic in nature this is what is meant by the magnetic properties and we can also add here that the magnetic moments are also associated with the magnetic behavior of any complex and we know that the magnetic moments that is mu it can be easily calculated by using a formula which is mu is equal to under root n n plus 2 bohr magnetons where the n is what it is the number of unpaired electrons in that given transition metal complex okay so this means if somehow we are able to find out the number of unpaired electrons we can easily calculate the values of mu from there right and if we know the values of mu i mean the magnetic moments we can say that whether the complex will be paramagnetic or diamagnetic in nature i mean the magnetic behavior will be very clear from the magnetic moment values right and we know that magnetic behavior is what it is actually the magnetic properties finally i want to say here that with the help of the crystal field theory and utilizing all this information here what we can end up with is the exact number of unpaired electrons in any complex whether high spin or low spin whether a strong field ligands are there or weak field ligands are there but we will definitely know what will be the exact number of unpaired electrons in any transition metal complex and from here what we can do is we can easily calculate the magnetic moment values which actually corresponds to the magnetic properties of that complex right so this is the connecting link i mean to say in between the crystal field theory and the magnetic properties it tells us the value of small n here with the help of which we can always calculate the values of mu which are what which are the magnetic properties so here i will say that the crystal field theory helps predict the magnetic properties of the transition metal complexes and after that here is uh, the example based upon the crystal field theory and we will see in this example that how the crystal field theory will help us in the prediction of the magnetic properties of the cobalt 3 complexes right so here you can see that we are having let us say two different cobalt 3 complexes in which the oxidation state of the cobalt will be plus 3 the first one is this complex here in which six ammonia ligands are there and if you will count the oxidation state of this cobalt it will come out to be plus 3 here right and 
the second complex is what it is this uh, cobar in which six fluoride ligands are there and even in this case the oxidation state will come out to be plus three here right so this means in both these complexes the metal ion is same and it is present in the same oxidation state that is plus three right so now we know that cobalt atomic number is 27 which will give an electronic configuration of 3d7 and 4s2 and same will come here in this way 3d7 4s2 and because it is present now in plus 3 state here so finally we will be having an electronic configuration of 3d6 only like this right and now based upon the crystal field theory assumptions we know that the ammonia ligand which is present here in this complex we know that it is actually a strong field type of ligand and thus it will produce a large crystal field splitting like this here starting from here it will be producing a large crystal field splitting in which the delta will always be greater than the pairing energy right on the other hand we also know based upon the crystal field theory that fluoride is actually a weak field type of ligand and thus it will be producing a small crystal field splitting which you can see here right so here the fluoride ions they are producing a little amount of crystal field splitting such that the delta for octahedral is less than the pairing energy in this case right and now if I will start filling the electrons in this complex here this is the first complex here and then in this second complex here based upon crystal field theory so what I will say is that because there are present six electrons you can see here there are present six electrons in the 3d shell so what now I can do here is that the electrons will be filled in this way the first electron second third and now the fourth electron will not be going up here in these uh, eg set of orbitals because you can see here the delta is quite high and the pairing energy is what it is less here the pairing energy is less here so the electrons will prefer to pair up right the fourth electron will come here like this then comes the fifth electron and in the last the sixth electron it will be like this right and in this case the delta is quite small as compared to the pairing energy and so we can write here that the pairing energy is quite high here so the electrons will not be preferring to pair up because of the high pairing energy so what will happen is the first electron will come here then comes the second third fourth fifth and now comes the sixth electron in this way okay so the important thing here is dear students that based upon the crystal field theory for this complex here as well as for this complex here now we are having some splitting patterns it is this here as well as this here and we are also having the preferential filling of electrons it is like this in this case and in case of the cobalt fluoride complex it is in this way here right so finally what I can say is that if we are considering the cobalt fluoride 6 I can write here without any doubt that it contains four unpaired electrons because it contains four unpaired electron definitely it will be what it will be and it will be a paramagnetic type of complex it will be a para magnetic type of complex and as far as the cobalt ammonia complex is concerned let me show here the cobalt ammonia 6 complex so because you can see here that it is not containing any unpaired electron let me write here it contains zero unpaired electrons zero unpaired electrons so better to write it as a diamagnetic type of complex let me write here the word diamagnetic this will be diamagnetic in nature right and moreover i can also go for the calculations of the magnetic moments in this case the magnetic moments will be what 
it will be mu that will be equal to uh, under the root 4 4 plus 2 here that will give me a value of what it will give me value of under the root 4 plus 2 6 for the 24 Bohr magneton as far as the fluoride case is concerned in that case the mu will be what it will be 0 Bohr magnetons right so now whatever paramagnetic behavior as well as diamagnetic behavior has come up for these two complexes so we can write here that either the paramagnetic behavior or the diamagnetic behavior or let us say the magnetic movement values what are all these things these are nothing these are the magnetic these are the magnetic properties of these two complexes in which the metal ion was same having the same oxidation state but definitely the ligands were different in one case ammonia was there in the second case fluoride was there and with the help of this crystal field theory here we are now having something about the magnetic properties of these two complexes so this is the link here in between the magnetic properties as well as the crystal field theory and it is helping us it is helping us in predicting in predicting the magnetic properties of these two complexes here right so this is an important significance of the crystal field theory that it gives us a lot of idea about the magnetic properties of the transition metal complexes and now here you can see i have a drawing here which is actually a type of a scale so that you can have some idea about the magnitude of crystal field splitting in different types of complexes and it is based upon the experimental observations so in the first case you can see here this is the cobalt ammonia 6 complex and here is the cobalt fluoride complex which we just have discussed in this lecture and here you can see that as far as the ammonia complex is there the delta o i mean the crystal field splitting amount here is what it is 23000 centimeter inverse on the other hand the fluoride case has a delta o of 13000 centimeter inverse here right so if you have a look here what i have written is that the pairing energy for cobalt complexes i mean this first complex here as well as this second complex here is same it is what it is 21000 centimeter inverse right so now if you compare this value i mean 23000 and 21000 we can say here that the delta is greater than the pairing energy thus it will be what type of complex it will be what it will be a low spin type of complex which we have just seen on the previous slide right on the other hand in this case the value 13000 is quite less as compared to the pairing energy so we can write here that the delta o is less than pairing energy so electrons will not prefer to pair up and they will move from here to the eg set of orbitals resulting in the formation of a complex that will be high spin in nature right and likewise you can see here that i have also shown two more complexes in which the metal ion is what it is the iron and the ligands are different as you can see it is the sino ligand as well as the aqueous or the water ligand here right so here you can see that in case of the sino because it is actually a strong field type of ligand let me write here a strong field type of ligand this much is the crystal field splitting energy in this case right so let me write here the delta o here is what it is this much of centimeter inverse which is quite higher as compared to that of the ammonia case here right so if we want to compare the field strength of ammonia and sino we can definitely say here that the ammonia as a ligand is a weak field ligand as compared to that of the sino ligand right so this much is the crystal field splitting in case of the iron complex when the sino is present as a ligand so definitely you can now see here the pairing energy is 17600 so 
let me write here that in this case the pairing energy is sorry in this case the splitting energy is quite high as compared to the pairing energy so this means the electron will prefer to pair up and they will remain in this part of the set of the orbital as much as possible right and resulting in the formation of a complex that will actually be a low spin type of complex in nature right now as far as the water is concerned as a ligand in this case the splitting energy is very low it is just 10,400 which is quite less as compared to the pairing energy so pairing energy is high here so the electrons will not prefer to pair up and from here they will start filling the higher set of orbitals I mean the eg set of orbitals right so this means in this case whatever complex we will get here I mean the iron water complex that will always be a high spin type of complex a high spin type of complex right so finally we can say that the low spin complexes will be containing less number of unpaired electrons and definitely they will be showing less magnetic movements which will be the magnetic properties of those complexes on the other hand the high spin complex will be containing high number of unpaired electrons and they will be exhibiting high magnetic movements which will also be a magnetic properties of those complexes so finally the crystal field theory helps in the prediction of the magnetic properties of the transition metal complexes so this is all about this lecture here thank you so much